Yeah. Uh, so this is chapter two. Uh, similar to, to Claire's reading, this happens after a somewhat cataclysmic event. Um, in this case, it's the main character who is a spy. He's coming home from a mission that didn't go quite right, and he has to report into his boss. Uh, his boss is Paul, and he's uh, going back into the office now. Paul's on a vid call when I walk into his office. I probably should have knocked first, but I'm here now, and staying will be marginally less awkward than leaving. I quietly sit down in one of the two chairs in front of his desk. The wrinkles around Paul's eyes and mouth make him look dignified rather than old. His gray hair reflects more light than you'd expect, looking almost silver. If he put on some weight and grew a beard, he might look like Santa Claus. With a beard and pointy hat, Merlin. With mud and chop sideburns and 18th century robber baron. Or was that the 19th century? Whenever people were still building railroads. He looks the same as that first night I met him. For better or worse, he's been the one constant thing in my life for almost a decade now. Different assignments, different partners, different objectives. But it's always been Paul calling the shots. I glance at the reversed vid image being projected onto the clear plexi screen rising out of his desktop. It looks like the Secretary of State. This is on you, Paul, the Secretary of State says. There's no mistake in that voice. You said your boy could handle it. Paul keeps his eyes on the screen, where the camera is mounted, and gestures with his right hand, pointing at the tray on the bookshelf against the wall. I get up and pour myself a glass of water. Of course, he's already gotten the medical report from Jessica. He did handle it, Paul says. We've successfully retrieved the item. You and I seem to have different standards for success. We needed kangaroo on this operation, Paul says. The item was larger than our sources indicated. Nobody else could have gotten it out of Kazakhstan as efficiently as he did. We also seem to disagree on the definition of efficient. He left an American body back there. And he put a Kazakh citizen in a goddamn hospital. Hospital. So old whiskey breath didn't die. That's a relief. I've got three different ambassadors yelling at my staff, State says. Once the president hears, let me deal with the president, Paul says. Oh, you will, State glares out of the screen. But this audit is happening, Paul. Kazakhstan was a straw that broke the camel's back. NSC is taking a fine tooth comb to anything tagged out back. I don't have time for this. They don't make time, State snaps. Really, Paul, how long did you think we were going to let you run your own private little op center without any oversight? I thought the subcommittee was more interested in overlooking. Not today, Paul. I'm not in the mood, State says. You're going to get some visitors from Langley, and you're going to cooperate fully. Do you understand? I understand. Paul's voice is cold. State sighs. Get your house in order. That's my advice, as a friend. The screen image ripples and disappears, and the plexi sheet melts back into the flat, shiny desktop. Paul looks at me. He's not smiling. I gulp down the rest of my water and put my glass on the desk. Do you know why there is a group of Hungarian operators monitoring Russia-Kazakhstan border crossings? He asks. I purse my lips. Because they were following the chicken? <laughs> because the actual State Department asked them to watch for black market arms smuggling.